Hi, this is Mike Young, estate planning and asset protection attorney in Walnut Creek, California. And I am going to go through the list of estate planning documents that I would typically prepare for a couple for a trust-based estate plan and for an individual. So before I do that, check uh, subscribe below and click like and make a comment if you would like to. I will share my screen with you. My firm is Walnut Creek Elder Law, and you can go online at walnutcreekelderlaw.com, find my website, and to find my contact information. You can feel free to call me or email to me. Also, on the website, you can sign up for my workshops. I do estate planning and advanced estate planning workshops every other Thursday. So I will show you the um, estate plan. Here's a typical estate plan that I would prepare for a couple, Bob and Mary. I've prepared the revocable living trust. I have transferred their home into the trust. Bob and Mary have transferred their Schwab accounts and Fidelity accounts to the trust. The IRAs stay outside of the trust because of tax reasons. And you'll see a reference to financial durable powers of attorney. And let's say they have three children, Lisa, Frank, and Jack and they've named Lisa as their successor trustee. So the documents, whoops. Here is a list of documents that I would prepare for Bob and Mary. So the first is property management, durable powers of attorney. I would probably make them effective Im immediately as opposed to springing where you need a doctor's note confirming incapacity. My powers of attorney have usually have Medi-Cal and asset protection planning provisions in them. Here's the revocable living trust, which is the centerpiece of the estate planning documents. So if it's just an individual like Mary, there would obviously just be one power of attorney. There would still be a revocable living trust I prepare a certification of trust, which is the document that the trustee uses to conduct trust business. And it's sort of a Reader's Digest version of the trust, and it protects the right of privacy of the makers of the trust, so that financial institutions, banks, or whoever it is, uh, do not need to see the whole trust. There are two healthcare forms, advanced Healthcare directives and HIPAA statements. Advanced healthcare directives in California are the healthcare powers of attorney. Uh, it references the probate code with healthcare powers. Uh, we can make the healthcare power of attorney effective immediately, just like I usually do with the financial power of attorney. So Bob and Mary would name each other and maybe one of the children. Secondarily, if Bob and Mary could not make healthcare decisions for each other. HIPAA statements, I always prepare. So there are state and federal laws regarding privacy to your medical records. And you want to give your spouse and maybe your children authority to have access to your medical records to give to a healthcare provider or insurance company. And then I prepare declarations of intent to remain home. Those do two things. One is it, it, it tells the children and the family that you want to be taken care of at home, if at all possible. And there's other language like that in my estate planning documents. In addition, there's language in these declarations that satisfy the state of California for Medi-Cal making the home exempt as an asset for qualification for Medi-Cal. The, the state wants to see a subjective intent in writing to return home, and that's what, what that is. Pour over wills, 
you should check out my other video on pour over wills, what they are and how they work. So this is a trust-based estate plan. We're avoiding probate. Wills means probate, but we're probably not going to use these wills. We would use them if after Bob and Mary are dead, an account pops up somewhere, uh, maybe there's $200,000 in it, we'll say, and it's not in the trust, and for some reason no beneficiary was made named, then I can file the will with the court and petition for a decree of distribution pouring that money back into the trust. It doesn't come up very often, but it's a safety net, and I always prepare that. For a couple, we have a community property agreement. California is a community property state. If uh, their property is indeed community, I want to confirm it as such in writing in the event we ever need to show that to the IRS or financial planner. And we want to get a full step up in basis for both Bob and Mary, husband and wife. So for instance, if Bob dies, we want Mary to get a full step up in basis on the home so that she could theoretically turn around and sell the home uh, right away without a capital gains treatment. And then we have a deed of the home to the trust. So it could be a single person, Mary, transfers to Mary as trustee under her trust, or Bob and Mary, uh, husband or wife as community property could transfer their home to Bob and Mary as trustees under their revocable living trust. And then preliminary change of ownership report is the document that we prepare that is required by the county assessor and recorder uh, to show them what we're doing. And that document is required before they will record anything. So that's the list of documents. There's 10 there, there might be more, there could be a letter precatory, uh, could be another document. But here are 10 documents, which could comprise, usually comprises, the typical trust-based estate plan in California. So feel free to contact me. My website is walnutcreekelderlaw.com. And uh, you can sign up on the website for my workshops, my uh, estate planning and advanced estate planning workshops. So don't forget to hit subscribe below, hit like, and make a comment if you would like to. So thank you for watching.